look like he can't actually see. I think that's exactly I what it is. I thought it's... this run was a joke, but it's... It, so, before we get to the conclusion and his apology, I am, I am going to speculate he can see the whole time and just does his best to act like it's blind. Mario 64 speedrun. I love cheating. I love this kind of shit. Let's see. I have not heard of this before. Despite the immense popularity of Super Jesus, Mario what is that? A speedrun, fucking soiled diaper on his face? A small amount of people running the blindfolded categories, a testament to how difficult or like a heating pad? Really is. And so it was surprising when I was on Twitch this week and was notified of another runner doing blindfolded 16 star runs. Blindfolded runs of Super Mario 64 have recently been made popular by a small but extremely dedicated group of runners. However, there are clear differences it's such a cool between the runs that already established players have done and the runs that this particular person has completed. The main difference, of course, being that this particular runner is creating fake runs and Thanks to Prime, pass them Mobot. off as real. I have here a video of one of these runs, and I aim to show some of the clear discrepancies between this run and the genuine blindfolded runs of SM64 that are out there. When watching this run, it's important to note that the author claims not to have practiced blindfolded speedrunning much at all, and this is apparently his third blindfolded Thank you. run. He claims to make up for this with the fact that he's been playing Super Mario 64 for the past three and a half years. However, it should be noted that despite the amount of time he has spent on the game, the best time on a run he has currently submitted is in 1826. Ew! mid-level time for 16 star. Pathetic. The thing that actually put me off when I was watching this run was the fact that the streamer had both follow alerts and text-to-speech alerts on. Let's go! Thank you for the follow. If you've ever seen a blindfolded speedrun before, you will know that runners pretty much always have these kind of sound alerts turned off. Considering how important sound cues are when you literally can't see, you would think that he would do the same. However, this guy That's a good so point. I didn't even think of that. He doesn't even need clear sound cues to do the run. Throughout this run, he also attempts multiple times to explain the strategies that he's been using. Is there some except disco there and OG song? What he's saying versus the things he's actually no, doing. I don't know what that is, Rip. He mainly claims to be using a combination of sound cues and muscle memory for most of his strats. Most speedrunners know, however, that visual cues in particular are just as important as muscle memory in many cases. It's very unrealistic to assume that anyone could just casually do a blindfolded run off of visual muscle memory alone. No matter how long that person has been playing. <laughs> I've, tr I've tried to do stars. I can't do one star blindfolded. Like, even though I've played this game for years and years and years, even trying to do one star blindfolded... Is no, I haven't seen this. ...insanely difficult. Blindfolded speedruns often employ what are called normalized strategies. A normalized strategy is any strat that is done in such a way that the outcome is always exactly the same. In Super Mario 64, many of these kinds of strategies can be employed. For example, moving in a cardinal direction of spider guy and Jade Nader. using two slow walks to ledge grab at the corner of a platform, or punching- I honestly thought this guy was the cheater because this thing looks so over the top. Straight up just looked like- it looks like Among Us. Like, this shit is crazy. I thought that this was some kind of elaborate scam, but I'm guessing this is a legitimate runner. I- I- what is- this? what is he wearing? Can tell, like, it's not a blindfold. This is like a whole goddamn, like, face sauna thing. Some, like, actual Daft Punk shit. It's a towel? How, how's that a towel? It's like karate safety gear that Spongebob wore. Hats off to him, though. Like, this, it, it looks fucking crazy. Like, this is hardcore. Words of fixed distance are all normalized strats. As you can imagine, these kinds of strats are often completely different from the ones that you one age in the gifts of Rallo and Risa Connor to properly learn. And no, yet sweet. this person Thanks, is Ahmed. claiming to have a 33 minute time after openly admitting to having little to no preparation. Keep that in mind when you look at the so-called blindfolded strats that are claimed to be employed here. The run begins in Bob-omb Battlefield with Behind the Chain Chomp's Gate. Looking at a legitimate example by Bubsia, you can see that a consistent setup with clear intention is being used in order to get onto the Chain Chomp's pole. Note the use of a notch down. Turns out everyone's cheating. They're all just trying to pretend the best they can. Comparatively, this runner seemed to have absolutely no normalized setup whatsoever. He takes what looks like either an intentional death or a legitimate mistake, and then tries again a second time. This time around, he seems to be using an almost completely different, yet still unnormalized setup to get onto the pole. The unexpected hit that he takes here from the chain chop should have immediately thrown him off, and yet he is somehow still able to turn around and recover. 
The runner seems to be using intentional mistakes along with fake setups to try to sell the idea that he is actually blindfolded. Many more of these will come up throughout the run. Please resubmit the Mastodon, run is already Fluffy Llama, a suspicious start. Alex God However, Gaming and Zlox. However, the first absolutely massive red flag appears in Womp's Fortress when the runner decides to offer Owlus, a strat usually reserved for sighted runs. It should be noted how much the runner is talking during this very input-heavy and spacing-dependent section. Did I check for saves? No, because uh, I, I don't I don't save the game. Again, what a Chad! Real blindfolded speed run before knows how quiet runners tend to be during difficult sections. With how much focus and skill are required to complete a blindfolded run, it's an anomaly that this runner with barely any practice is so casually able to do a strat that no other blindfolded runner has attempted. Well, he's and just the god gamer. No normalized strats, he seems to do everything with some relative ease. Looking at a run that this same runner has done without a blindfold, you can actually see that he can do the exact same movements, blindfold or not. His muscle memory is really oh. be that good. <laughs> On his first attempt, he is able to triple jump wall kick up to the floating island without giving himself any sort of indication where he is. With absolutely no normalization, he's able to attempt and- He's got his gaming Sharingan on. ...landing it a fourth time. He even comments on the fact that he should probably learn how to use the owl blindfolded. Maybe I should learn how to just ride the owl blindfolded. It's anyone's guess why he didn't opt to learn this much more consistent strat in the first place. In the next star, he goes for the traditional cannon setup some which you random normally guy. see in most sighted runs. Once again, looking at a blindfolded version of this strap, there is a clear intention with every input using normalized movements and guaranteed setups. Looking God, back at the blindfolded run, however, run is crazy. Across the falling bridge and over to the piranha plant is extremely wobbly and very inconsistent. He then lines up next to the plank using these extremely small adjustments that have no audio cues whatsoever. Anyone that runs this game or has even tried this trick before knows that it's. Yeah, this is super fake. Oh my god! Way anyone could do it. He didn't even try. The movement used here would be if they weren't actually blindfolded at all, and were instead using a distinctly visual cue. The run only gets more and more suspicious from this point onward. Following a couple more extremely wonky and unnormalized setups in Cool Cool Mountain, we reach Bowser in the Dark World, the first Bowser stage. Here, only a true gamer such as this man would be able to somehow sidestep this Goomba quickly make his way up the path, and then do this long jump to the next red, all completely blindfolded and with absolutely no setup necessary. Simply amazing. What was the point though? Like, surely he didn't think that- I heard you, Goomba. He then pushes <laughs> a Goomba that he claims he heard, even though there is no good- He smelt it. Distance that precise with sound cues no, 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 he, he's got a super sniffer, he's like Scooby-Doo. Faster and safer to just keep walking forward anyway. There's no way he'd think that he'd fool the whole community that actively runs this game though, blindfolded. Slope. Anyone who is actually blindfolded here would have almost certainly the kept point? holding right with no adjustment. And yet this man somehow knew he was just a little too far down, despite having absolutely no real setup beforehand. If none of this was suspicious enough, then next we have the first Bowser throw. Looking at legitimate runs by Katoon and Bubsia, you can see Maxi that a setup pad, is being used to slowly move blade, Bowser into finishing the touches and Rex Lord. Him. For a faster strat, you can also toss him a little earlier with a slower spin, which provides a much larger frame window than normal to hit the throw. It should be noted that there is a combination of pause buffering and a sound cue. When Mario is spinning Bowser, a distinctive whoosh noise will play. This noise will always play whenever Bowser faces Thanks north, regardless supply. of the camera angle or Bowser's orientation. Thank you, Sky Shark. Well, I hope you're doing well. Furthermore, Thank you for the, kind the words. whoosh will make a slightly different sound depending on what frame you pause on. Super Mario 64 speedrunning is down to an incredible science. This is the strategy that Nabori implements, and it's how he's able to consistently pause buffer a B-press to throw Bowser into the bomb. However, it seems like this runner couldn't be bothered to learn any of these strats. He instead opts to throw Bowser in the conventional way, while claiming to also be using a sound cue. Notice, however, that he also opts to turn his camera towards the bomb. As explained, turning the camera during spins does not affect the timing of any audio cues, and so it would be pointless to do this if the runner was truly blindfolded. Thanks, it's pretty obvious Catholic, here that he's just turning Buffles, the camera so he can Ciroc, see what and he Atlas. Moving on to basement, we see another series of extremely suspicious and inconsistent setups. In Shifting Sandland, he is somehow able to get the Talon Star using a strategy only viable for visual runs. The Until amount of now. needed to long jump to the fly guy and twirl over to Klepto is simply <clears throat> too precise to be done consistently in a blindfolded run. More like to be done at all. He's able to do it first try with no issues. In Hazy Maze Cave, however, he reverts back to setups that might pass as blindfolded to try to further sell the idea that he cannot see. 
However, the quantum flight setup he is using makes absolutely no sense. Atlas. On the emergency exit star, he seems to have created some kind of fake counting system. Is Boomy interested? I was actually watching some of Boomy's content minutes. the other day when someone mentioned it. Compare this again to Nabori's strat, which uses normalized movements along with the game's fixed camera option for even more consistent angles. Up to this point, the run has been extremely suspect at best. However, what happens in the second half is absolutely destroys what little credibility it had in the first place. The last half of this run is so blatantly fake that it makes the previous 20 minutes well, you, look Price. completely legit by comparison. And... Yes! <laughs> Oh, come on, let's go. Yeah, let's Next fucking go! In my opinion, one of the most impressive sections of Blindfolded 16 Star. Successfully doing MIPS clip in a real blindfolded speedrun requires an extremely precise setup involving walking into a corner with the correct camera angle, and then repeatedly re-grabbing MIPS to achieve the correct spacing on the door. This is one of the most difficult and precise sections in the entire run. In the castle building, even the tiniest mistap <laughs> to the left or right can mess up your camera entirely, breaking any setup you may have had. This runner, however, throws all of that out the window. To clip through the basement door, he basically just runs straight at it and ends up in the right spot. No setup needed. Remember that there are absolutely zero sound cues here. There is absolutely no way he can know how close or far away he is from the door because he is using literally no sound No, cues. he's get, he's the exact same as true. He's smelling the game, the baby. Door. Once again, with absolutely no discernible audio cues and no real setup whatsoever, he somehow either knows exactly where he is on the door, or just gets lucky enough to clip through it after randomly guessing. He spends around 30 seconds here walking back and forth along the door, and somehow is able to find the exact right spot to make it through. Somehow, it still gets worse after this. At this point, I'm, much I'm actually convinced that he's doing it for real. That he is blindfolded. Look like. it really I think I'm just like seeing an ultimate gamer. Trying to sell the illusion any further. He approaches the submarine in dire dire docks from a seemingly random angle, and then tries to make it look like he knows where he is by jumping at it. I slid off something. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, am I at the submarine? Yes, okay. The fact that he even says this is strange to me. There's literally nothing else in this level Overacting a little bit? Besides the sub. So it doesn't Fuck, really am I playing Super Mario? He had to figure out what he was Jeez, okay, well, this is good, this is good he for us. He needed to make it look like he had some kind of cue to go off of, and then did the absolute bare minimum to try to make it convincing. He then approaches the back of the sub, as you would in a normal speedrun, but he ends up under the fin, causing the camera to go in an awkward direction. It should be painfully obvious how bad this looks. A real blindfolded runner would be completely disoriented in this situation, and there is no consistent way you could realistically recover from this. Despite this, he is somehow able to move <gasps> back around at the perfect angle and lands back on the fin. It's his gamer again, senses. With absolutely zero sound cues or any setup. Nothing suspicious to see here. And then there's Fire Sea. Thanks for some Dapper Noodle, Snowhound, Diaper Time, and Brutal Meat. Well, this has always just been an easy level, though. I could do this blindfold, and I haven't played this game in eight right. years now. So after some it's more easy. fake strats and fire seeds, and some pussy one shit. fake Bowser throw setup, and some suspicious BLJ lineups, we finally come to what manages to be the worst part of the run by far. This run's Bowser in the Sky is pure gold. It contains such a large amount of glaring flaws and inconsistencies that it's insane that anyone could look at it and believe that the person playing could not actually see. He immediately starts the course with, again, completely unnormalized strats, moving through the course with small adjustments that have seemingly no explanation. He then commits what is possibly the most obvious and completely shameless move in the entire run. I don't- I don't know how he tops some of the other shit, to be honest. Fuck, I didn't get that extra life. I was laughing my ass off when I first saw this. <laughs> Not only does he somehow know exactly what, a man! what the is, but he also knows exactly what direction the 1-Up will go in once it spawns, something completely determined by RNG. Then, after chasing it on a moving platform for a completely arbitrary amount of time, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation. exactly when and where to jump to the left. You don't even need to know anything about Super Mario 64 or blindfolded speedrunning to understand that what just happened is completely bullshit. Immediately after skipping the first 1-Up, he messes around on the first rotating elevator, grabbing the next one up in the process. Yes, okay. All clearly. His acting's not even life. good though. Like, why not After really this, sell it? He once again makes an intentional mistake. Like, oh my fucking god, it's an extra life! Blindfolded. Wee! Go wild. I just, I fell off. 
He just goes from overacting to underacting. This is somehow the first and only time in this 40 minute run that he accidentally runs off of a platform. Except immediately after falling off, he somehow also knows to pull back to the right so he doesn't fall all the way down. Only then does he comment that he knows he's fallen down, again with absolutely no discernible sound cues. Following this, he traverses the wooden platforms and tries to go for yet another 1-up. <laughs> this man's addicted to 1-ups. He clearly saw this 1-up with his eyes, but then remembered he was supposed to be blindfolded. So he passes it off by acting like he knew there should be a 1-up there and goes back to grab it. Again, no setup whatsoever. Ha, ah, got it. Watch now as he somehow knows exactly where he is on the spinning platform and knows exactly where the first pole is. Again, anyone who was actually blindfolded here would have probably just kept holding left and run off. However, this guy is able to make a completely random amount of adjustments to make it onto the pole. He then makes a way to hyper the next shot, pole and grabs the red, which he seems to be using as an audio cue. Okay, I know what pole I'm at. Then, immediately after jumping off of the pole that he knows he was just on, he attempts to use two bob bombs on the next platform to further determine his position. There should be like some bob bombs up. Yes. Okay. This is absolutely pointless, as he had already just verified where he was. All he had to do here was hold forward, and he would have reached the next wall. At this point, he once again reiterates the fact that this is only his third blindfolded run ever. Wow, he's a prodigy. This is your second blindfolded run, isn't it? Uh, technically, this is my third. And to be fair, first one I did was like, while he can see, it is still blindfolded. There is a blindfold there. It in the last work. four minutes alone, there have been countless points of extreme suspicion. From the moment he enters the stage to the moment he enters the final pipe, there is almost nothing that could be considered even remotely legitimate. However, the final Bowser throws that he does in the next four minutes are somehow even worse. He begins by grabbing Bowser using the normal is visual it tier method. One Xerxes in the Running around Archer, Bowser with a tight enough Frasier. circle to grab him is something that heavily relies on visual cues to properly do. This is why in a real blindfolded run, a setup is used for the first two grabs that involves luring Bowser <clears> to a bomb from the edge of the platform. God, it's such a cool strat. For the final throw, a separate normalized setup is used. And yet, after only one miss, this person is able to grab Bowser in the normal way, no problem. Note that after this first mistake, he does not miss a single tail grab for the rest of the fight. He then winds up for the first throw and misses. <laughs> Once a throw is missed, Bowser will jump back onto the stage differently depending on where he fell off. There isn't a very good way to account for this, so the only real backup is to run off and try again from the beginning. But this guy doesn't do that. He instead goes for a re-grab and gets it, again with no setup and no sound cues. He hits the throw on his second try. Woo! The normal visual this man's a hero! Let's go! During his second throw, he stops and talks for about 30 Maybe seconds. Maybe he's like the daredevil. First learned to speed run he, like, he's like a superhuman who, who can do things blind. The viewer is asking. Uh, actually not a lot. I feel like if I practiced more, I'd be a lot better at it. Most of this is just muscle memory and listening to the audio cues. But I've been speedrunning and playing Mario 64 for three and a half years solid. That's nothing. That's nothing. So, like, I could... And I, I... Well, during streams, I would, I would like... Because I knew before I did my first blind run... Blind Holy run fuck, run, James, you're good at blindfolded. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. No. Oh. Just like I guarantee he bought some Shungite. Or just looking at, like, away from the TV and doing the run. He is once again constantly talking during a section that should take an extreme amount of focus to execute. And yet, he still figures out exactly when he needs to throw Bowser. Oh, fuck yeah. After messing around for another minute, he then gets another re-grab, once again with no setup or any possible audio cues. During the final throw, he turns the camera not once, but twice to visually aim at two separate bombs. He then goes on yet another explanation about how he's able to do Bowser throws. And through some Yuki, Krusty Schlong, holding it down, Supernatural Peen, Riddler, and so Permafried, and Tier right 1 much feels. Why it's taking me so long to throw him is because I'm trying to time it based on like where my thumb is oh. on the controller. No, now it makes so, sense. Because that's typically like a right right around where Mario is like right. the direction that he's gonna throw. So I usually need to be like if I think the bomb is where I think it is, if, if the bomb is where mm -hmm. I think it is, and I'm looking at it, then... Uh, then we're golden. Obviously none of then this we're makes in. sense in the first place, but he oh, is directly... Were you listening to the explanation? 
Here he, he feels the chakra vibrations in the air. on the stick to know where Bowser is, which already makes no sense on its own. Except he also mentioned in his first Bowser throw that he was using sound cues. Bowser is a little bit tricky. The sound cues on this is actually kind of hard. Thanks to give some Fluffy and Corso okay. in the Prime Banner. This whole time, he's just been giving fake no, technical know what explanations that is. Maranu, to try Maranami. to convince his viewers that he actually Multi knows what he's doing. Multi-billion dollar scam. Except he also misses this throw because he was too far away to ever hit the bomb in the first place. Something he probably should have known whether he could actually see or not. Maybe he's only pretending to be blindfolded so he can hide the fact that he sucks at Bowser throws. Oh, let's not- okay, let's not get personal here. Okay. okay? Come on now. Let's let's be professional about this. He eventually does land the last throw, luckily avoiding all the fire. Unbelievable. Barely avoiding Besmirching this good man's name. Pure skill and game sense. After the run is over, he is challenged multiple times by one of the only doubters in his chat. He is asked to verify that he can actually do blindfolded Bowser throws, but refuses to do even the simplest test to prove it. So would you be opposed to doing Bowser in the sky and throws while turned around with a blanket over my head? Yeah, that's reasonable. Say yes. Fifty dollars. If I do it turned around with a blanket over my head, I'll give you five hundred. Start a bidding war. Don't cry. Say yes. Yeah. Let's get hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Fuck. Despite the glaring flaws in this person's gameplay, he has somehow been able to convince all but a few of his viewers that his blindfolded runs are legit. Messages in his Twitch and Facebook gaming chats show that most of the people watching him are completely convinced that what they're seeing is real. The best I can possibly assume in this situation is that he may actually be doing some of these parts at least partially blindfolded, only peeking through the blindfold whenever he's completely lost or doesn't know what to do. It's either that or the blindfold is just completely see-through, and his only goal during the run is to make it look like he can't actually see. I think that's exactly I what it is. I thought it's... this run was a joke, but it's... It, so, before we get to the conclusion and his apology, I am, I am going to speculate he can see the whole time and just does his best to act like it's blindfolded, but he, he doesn't know like how to ride that line. So he's either extremely overacting or underacting. It's, ni it's never like good acting. It's just a poor performance all around. I was in the Hunger Games. I don't like to bring that up too often. But I, with my acting expertise, I can always pick apart acting, whether it's good or bad. So I just, I just have, to, I have to make that clear. And his explanation of Bowser with his thumb on the control stick correlating to where Mario is in the, the Nether Realm, the Shadow Realm, whatever. There's some real merit to that, though, I think. Clear from the way he's talking about his gameplay that he's completely serious. I can only speculate on this person's motives for faking these runs, but my best guess is that he's doing it for either the money or the views. It should be noted that during the run, the only way to communicate with him was to donate bits to play a text-to-speech message on stream. Considering the run is fake, this just seems like a scummy way for him to take money from people. But honestly, for only one bit per message, it doesn't really seem that bad. If the amount was any higher, I would probably have a much bigger problem with it. But whatever small amount of money he did collect is probably the least of our worries here. There hasn't been a notable cheating incident in the Mario 64 community for a few years now, so I guess we were about due for another one. By what faking was the this previous run, one? this person has not only made a complete mockery of blindfolded speedrunning, but has also detracted from the hard work of people who have actually put in the insane amount of time needed to do this for real. This particular run ended with a 42 minute time, however he claims to have completed a faster time of 33.23, a time which would be considered second place on the current leaderboards. When asked if he will submit the time, however, he claimed that he wants to take first place before he makes any submissions. I trust, however, that the mods of the category are smart enough to see that any run he submits will be clearly invalid. Though I wouldn't be surprised if he never even submits a run, because he probably knows that it would never get verified anyway. He's a prime codec. If you happen to Sam. see this guy on Twitch or anywhere else, please just don't interact with him. I've intentionally left his name out of this video, one, because I don't wish for anyone to harass him over this, That's and good. two, because I, I don't believe that, that any cheater deserves attention past simply being exposed. I want to give a big shout out to both Katoon and Bubsia for their incredible help on this video. They helped to clarify a lot of questions I had about blindfolded Mario 64, and this video would not have been as comprehensive without their inputs. Thanks also thanks to both them Catherine. and Nabori for allowing me to use their footage for comparisons. I've left links Holy to all their shit, did you see that? There's like 15 blindfolds on him.
Also, thanks to both them and Nabori. It was for a towel, their a blindfold, a blindfold. Links to all of their streams all together. And channels in the description. Please check all three of them out if you Holy want to see shit. some legitimate blindfolded runs of Mario 64, as well as many other games. These people have genuinely put in the insane amount of time and focus needed to successfully complete these runs for real. They're the ones who truly deserve it. If you please, you can also subscribe to this channel and check me out over on Twitch. My runs aren't quite as cool as these guys yet, but we'll still have some fun. I kind of want to learn Super Mario speedrunning, to be honest. I tried when back in 2012 watching Siglimic. It's hard, but it looks so fun. That was a great video. So you said the guy apologized? Okay, so I'm guessing it's this one. That is the... I, I, I don't want to just keep pausing it, but a PSA to anyone. Never start an apology video like that. That is the most cliche shit ever. I'm surprised he doesn't have a dog on his lap. Rough. The sigh. If he follows it up by saying, I didn't want to have to make this video, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Hello. Alright, cool. We're good. By now, I'm sure you have all have seen this video. And I just wanted to shed some light on that video on what is going on i wanted to explain my side of this situation things are some brian and too much sauce what you watched zap. was an edited version obviously true wicked my Reset ribbit blindfolded speed run that uh, was on twitch now what you may not know is that that speed run was purposely fake oh purposely. fuck yeah let's go um the video is 100 percent correct by saying that it is so quiet clearly obvious that it is not a real blindfolded run yes that is 100 percent accurate okay, that's not working it's not a real blindfolded run it never was it never was um prior to doing this stream i decided to do this run as a way to joke around and have fun with my community at the time there was only about 20 people watching my stream and i do not have a very large community if you said dine edge asiago and the prime zachary and jen never meant to be submitted it was never meant to be legitimate and a lot of the things in the run that are telltale signs point to that one of the major things is you can clearly see that a lot of the run is just not at all similar to other blindfolded speed runs. I've watched blindfolded speed runs, um, and they're very impressive. They're very impressive. They are. They are very impressive. And I never once wanted to take away anything from those individuals that do do those runs. I have the utmost respect for them. Those runs are very impressive. At this point, I've never, like... You should double down and be like, those runs fucking suck compared to mine. I myself am a speedrunner, but I have no legitimate interest in uh, going that route with my speedruns. I'm just content doing what I normally do. I have been doing this a very long time. Not as long as some of the bigger names, but I have been doing this for a number of years. Is that a meme, Fizz? Maybe. And again, I wanted to emphasize that, well, that this cool is not real. It was never meant to be real. It was never submitted. It was never submitted. It was never going to be submitted. I never had the intention of taking anyone's spot on the leaderboard. How does and this I go on for 11 this minutes? It would never be verified, even if submitting it was part of the plan, but it never was. Because it would never get past the verification process. And one of the main reasons is that it's painfully obvious that this isn't real. To the point to where I had a TTS on. The automated service is it tier one, Cody? that will read. And I want to express this to you guys uh, here on YouTube. And let you know, you know, what I, what I think of it all. And, you know, what my side of it all is. 
I know the video paints me in a very specific light, and I'm not a bad person. I'm not like a mean-spirited person. It didn't I'm make any of those claims. Person. Spiteful. I don't do things maliciously. What? It's not just. It's not who I am. Uh, this was just good fun. This was just jokes. I had fun. My downfall. I did enjoy it. Is that I didn't express explicitly in that stream that it was jokes. I try to keep it straight the entire time. I stumbled within the stream, but I kept it straight for the majority. That's okay. And others have understood where I'm coming from. And while some of them might say, ah, man, you know, it's, that's still, uh, that's still rough, but, uh, that- He doesn't even cry. Um, but again- Are you gonna make an apology video and not cry? Like I am. I didn't think about it in that broad scope. I don't think anybody, uh, who is anybody would ever see anything that I do. I'm not a big name. I'm not, I wouldn't even consider myself like a medium-sized creator- well, that was underwhelming. Oh, here's bullet. Po oh my God. Jesus Christ. All right. I think what he should have done, like if I was his PR manager, I think he should have come into this apology really combative. He should have come in here and be like, anyone who thinks I cheated, I challenge you to fucking wrestle me in the Thunderdome. I I've rented out the local octagon and if you think I cheated, you can come fucking fight me. Like he should have just come in here really aggressive and just denied the fuck out of it. But he didn't. It's pretty boring.